Good morning, cabrón. Hey, morning. Everyone. Hey. I don't know. Hey. Hello. Hey, Ren. All right. Let's give everyone a few more minutes. Um, and hey, Mike, I think you said hey at the beginning, but didn't say hello back. Hey, hi, how you? Pretty well, how about you? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad, what happened? I'm, I'm double duty watching a baby right now. <laughs> so it's, it's trying to attack yeah. the cat. This week in Finland, there's also a school holiday. So I'm like at the same time working from home and uh, supervising my kid. Well, that's, that's not fun. It's okay. <laughs> How many kids do you have? Sasha, how many kids do you have? Uh, just one. Just one. Uh, could be worse. And it's the, <laughs> yeah, and it's the 10 years old, so it's already not a big problem, but just from time to time, require attention. All right. Uh, let me ping Renal and Mike Brown just to see if they plan on joining. And once I'm done, we can probably start. So this... Hey, Renal, how you doing? Hey, how are you doing, Mike? Ah, crazy. <laughs> this, I can doc this docker thing is killing me. <laughs> they're they're, okay. they're stressing the entire industry. <laughs> well, the What's container happening? image industry, anyway. Uh, What's going on now? Just the retention stuff with the image. Yeah, yeah, just the retention stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you getting well, any? Well, I mean, there's two. There's two parts, right? The, one is the, um, the deleting the images that haven't been touched. The other, the more important one is the is the new limits restrictions on how many pulls you can do an hour. That, I mean, they're not really gonna, you know, nu go nuclear on November first. At least not according to you know our buddy. Mr. Cormac, right? But but they, that's what it currently says. It says, uh, you know, on that date, if you pull 100 images in six hours, you're out, right? No more images that, until after the six hours. If you're doing it anonymously, if, if you log in on a free account, you get 200 pulls, right? Yep. And, you know, for a developer, that's fine. But for uh, people who do installs at customer sites, <laughs> whoops, that's not going to work. Well, yeah, how to, to like... run local proxy? <laughs> yeah, kind of uh, 
the way they do it they charge it back to the user instead of like the image owner like there should be an option for the image owner for like there there, there is mike but they're not making it public uh. <laughs> so so yeah they, yeah they do have they've got two whitelisting programs one i don't have the details on on the client side and the other is on the on the source side if you have an organization you know with a bunch of repos you can you can you can pay them to for the resource storage and and downloads they'll do some estimate on the amount you've got and give you a number um <laughs> I'm, we're still working that out i've got a call with them on wednesday to figure out if we're going to try to protect ibm com <laughs> well it's it's yeah and that's the other thing right they're just not being they're not very public about all the different programs they have just yet I think probably because they're still trying to figure it out. Of All course, right, that'll only protect IBM Com pulls for anonymous users. It won't help anything, you know, on the on the other side. IBMers who still need to pull public images will be, you know, out of luck, right? We'll have to get a seat, a team seat, I guess. Well, I know what our guys already hit some limits uh, in the testing clusters. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 noticed, they noticed throttling. Yeah, they have throttling limits for the people who pull hundreds of the same image hundreds of times per second on the same IP. Yeah, they're they're trying to throttle those guys pretty hard. Yeah, you set up pull through caches. My P2P service, okay. uh, peering service won't work anymore. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely the the solution, Mike. It's just that there there are a certain scenarios where where they've gotten used to using the latest tags, and Docker only counts the uh, they they don't they don't care how how much how big the image is on the client side. They're just counting the number of manifests, right, and saying, okay, that's one pull for one image, no matter how many manifests you want. And then, of course, we're just using that for verification validation of the hash, you know, uh, blobs that we have stored on our cache. But, you know, they're, they're, they, don't, they don't care. <laughs> so if you, if, you, if you do latest or default, right, um, or pull always just to check the, you know, authentication, verification, uh, then, 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 yeah, that's a, that's a pull, right? Um, you can do, you can use mirrors. But you know, then you know, how often do you go back to the source to make sure that the you know the original root public is is uh, you know still the current version? I guess you can configure that on the mirror. All right, um, I think we're yeah. still waiting for Renan, but we can probably start. Uh, he just joined. He just <clears throat> I'm on. Yeah. Um. So. Thanks for joining everyone today. Um, this is recorded, by the way. It'll be uploaded on the Sig Run Times YouTube channel. Um, so on, on the agenda, we have really two items, and the third one is just um, a reminder to go and review um, the resource management improvement um, uh, improvements uh, PRs. Um, the two items are the next concrete steps for CDI and NRI. And the second item is just um, some discussions around the panel for the COD COD work group at KubeCon, namely questions we'd like to ask and um, answers we'd like to, uh, I mean, talk about. So uh, we can probably start with the next concrete steps uh, for CDI and NRI, uh, because uh, we wanted to have that discussion with Michael Crosby in the room. Um, so, I think um, maybe um, uh, Sasha and um, mentioned that he had talked to you, Michael Crosby. Um, could you maybe um, get us at, up to speed on what is the plan or what, it, what are the ideas that you have for the NRI? And I think there was some mentions about a shared libraries between multiple projects. Um, do you, is that is that a good introduction or? Could you maybe help us um, just get us up to speed? Yeah, I think the, the other thing that's been asked a couple times is to to what level of degree will be 
extending the NRI to support, you know, additional cases that um, the Intel guys, for example, had had a need for uh, at NRI. For example, you know, hooks in different stages um, for pods and things like that. Michael, do you want to start first or I'll start from my uh, side? Uh, I can. Like, so far, the initial design of NRI was around uh, resource management, specifically a need that I had for CPU and NUMA, and then expanding out to things like huge, huge paid support, L3 cache, things like that. Um, kind of over the past month or so, we've been working on a few different plugins to support that. And so far, the life cycle hooks of where we have now for like um, the create, start, um, delete, and update calls all have worked out well. I, I can see some missing areas around maybe a, a pre-create where NRI plugins would have have a chance to maybe modify the spec or do some transformations before a container gets created. But so far, from my point of view, I think it's flexible enough in terms of supporting this. But um, we've also discussed uh, about some ways where we can share some underlying code for the plugins. I think the API is pretty generic and, and straightforward. It's collaborating a lot on the plugins and how those are built. So that's, I guess, what I have of where the current state is. All right. Um, so maybe at least um, one of the things we wanted to do with um, CDI um, is this part that you're mentioning where we have a pre-create and we, we change a spec. Um, one of these ideas here, at least um, one of the thoughts or the reasoning behind changing the spec is that, um, for example, when you're adding a device and you're um, informing ContainerD or Podman um, about the fact that there is a device, then when, for example, a user um, calls the or makes a call to the update uh, path, uh, we don't need to have a hook in the update path uh, because of um, so the the way that it currently works is that when you're updating the resources, um, if you've added a device in um, in the create path without informing your runtime, um, you also need to um, I mean have a hook in the update path to re-add that device. Um, but even there, you'd be kind of, um, you'd be in this position where if your process was reading from that device node and the update path removes um, the device from the C groups and you re edit as part of your hook, um, your process is gonna lose um, the read access to or read write or whatever permission access uh, it has to the device uh, during that brief amount of time. So uh, you know, for update pass devices handling at the moment is not possible at all. Like of course, like if you do modification pass, <laughs> I'm I'm saying what update pass uh, in OCI spec right now is not able to modify the devices. So you can do no, it, it does it does modify the devices. I mean, we have a long-standing bug where uh, because of how we do we because of the fact that we add devices in a container. Uh, for example, with the CPU manager, the CPU manager goes in, updates the, just calls the updates on the CPUs, and the container loses uh, all the C groups um, permissions to read from the dev NVIDIA nodes. So at least, I mean, that's one of the reasoning where um, we had behind with um, changing the spec is that once the once the spec has, or once the changes have been sent to the container runtime, the hook is no longer, or at least the, the plugin is no longer on the hook to um, get in there and intercept every update call. The other one is that there's, 
in a way, a simplifying factor um, to just having a JSON file that says, it just mounts these device nodes and that's it, rather than have a shell script that goes in MK nodes of devices, um, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think I think the API of how we interact is it's very flexible. So it, it would allow you to do a lot of that. It's just making sure we have the correct hooks in the in the CRIs. But yeah, I think I think it's totally doable when I started looking into a pre pre create hook where like it would be more of the contract between NRI and a CRI because We'd have to like accept the current spec on standard in, do your transformations, modifications, send it back on standard out for these plugins. And then CRI would have to commit that and say, okay, this is the, the final spec. Hmm. Okay. Um, so maybe I think one of the question that at least I had was, um, if, if we feel like the NRI is the right way forward, um, the first question is, is the NRI something that we think um, we'll be able to see in not just container D, but um, other runtimes? And the second question is, um, if, if it is the case, how do, we, how do we take advantage of that? How do we concretely, what are the expectations um, that like, where where do we start making pull requests? Um, what, what's what's a step that we can actually start acting on and um, help build this this idea on top of the NRI? Yeah, I think Renal would be the best to to talk about if Cryo would be interested in supporting this the way. I'm building it like I'm hoping it the goal is for it to be generic just like CNI is and a lot of the the domain specific implementation happens in the plugins where we're just providing hooks within our CRI implementation so so um, yeah I think uh, it does make sense but I think I need to understand the bigger picture like with in case of CDI we understand that uh, will look at something of that sent over the CRI and decide that, okay, we need to make these modifications to the spec. So uh, how are we integrating with the other items uh, in the spec? Like when are we deciding that we're calling into the NRI? Are we mapping from the CRI or do we expect changes to the kubelet uh, that call into the NRI? Uh, yeah, maybe sometime I can give you a demo on it with what I have so far, but also talking with Alex, like, I think a lot of this field, like, some of these low level things shouldn't be in the kubelet, the kubelet's already pretty big and it, it hinders some of the low level details that we want to do. And so that that's why it's geared just at the CRI level where we we have a better understanding of the underlying system. Okay. So, yeah. uh, Ronald, uh, from, from our side, uh, in, in our project, what CRI Resource Manager, what we are doing is, we practically, we define the messages from CRI, what is interested to uh, potential policies. So it's all about the metrics of the containers of CRI and when all the create, update, delete uh, messages. Um, so we, we can react on reports, we can react on individual containers, uh, we can, uh, um, for example, for, for the statistics, we can use the CPU cycles, what is reported by the runtime to actually trigger some of the update of uh, resources like CPU cores or, or something else. Okay, yeah, I think yeah. that makes sense. If it's over the CRI, it, it's, it's easily integrable. Uh, yeah, but I think with, with CRI is what uh, 
at, at least on our side, what we expect is what we hooks, uh, well, whatever, like in our case, it's called policies, we're able to modify intercepted messages. So for example, like in case of create container, we can modify the resource fields. And the only real difference between CDI and NRI is you just taking it down one level so that uh, we can support more than just a device specific API. We want to support devices and resources and whatever we can think of in the future. Uh, from my side, also to add what Michael said is uh, we're the mechanisms which uh, like uh, blueprinted from the CNI plugins when they're executable, executed as a hook, it potentially might be okay, but on a high loaded system, it's uh, quite expensive operations. So uh, ideally what we are uh, expecting to have is uh, potentially some gRPC mechanism or some other mechanism where we can um, integrate uh, closely to the runtimes, uh, both cryo and then container D with uh, high efficiency passing this data back and forward. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like yeah, the CNI exec invocation is expensive. Like if you have a lot of calls, it will run 10 away. Yeah, I think Michael's NRI sort of solves all that, right? We just have to make some decisions. Uh, you know, Alex, you, you're modifying the uh, the spec before the container runtime receives it in the CRI space. Um, yes. We like to store what we receive <laughs> from Kublet, right? Um, in in our, our own little storage. Um, so we, we'd like, I think, to store it first before you make your modifications. Um, if we need to store it again after you make the modifications, that's, that's fine, that's fair. Um, but, but well, uh, we, we don't have any specific problems of how it's structured and, we, and, it, and actually maybe even having um, well some level of debug which saying like this is what we received from uh, CRI socket and this is what internals uh, plugins modified it, it, it might be a good solution. Um, no problem with that. Uh, our, our task and our design is what we need to be able to have uh, get from the runtime the whole state of a uh, uh, system, like all, all the pods, all the containers, and just because of how our algorithm works, we, we, we need to keep in the memory to rebalance the tree of the resources if needed. Okay. Yeah, that was yeah. one gap that, that we noticed is we want at least one change in the kubelet to provide us the entire pod spec instead of feeding us containers one by one because like the information's there it just doesn't give the cri the, the whole pod spec where we can make better more efficient uh decisions when we know the entire workload Michael, you, you probably missed it. Uh, Auntie started to draft a cap uh, about what uh, it's linked in the meeting minutes below. So we will, and now it's partially linked to our discussion what we had in this um, CRI going to GE or better uh, discussion about the generalizing how we communicate the resources down from the couplet. Okay. Yeah, Michael, the, when you say the whole pod specification, there's a lot of good stuff there. And it's not just the pod spec, it's also the other objects that are related to the pod spec that Kubelet uses um, you know, to make decisions and to set up the pod information that's passed on the pod run request. Um, there's also a bunch of other stuff that happens before they do a pod run, um, you know, in, insofar as doing image caching and loading, um, you know, querying the state of the node that sort of stuff, right? I mean, Kubelet keeps that information, you know, pretty pretty tight to the vest. Um, but I, th I think we they, they have a um, a thing in, in Kubelet um, called a you know a container runtime manager, <laughs> and and I think there, there was an original intent in Kubelet for that to be the CRI, and right now it's it's just got a lot of stuff that we need access to, so we we probably need to expand extend the pod specification and other objects that Kubelet uses 
to be distributed through the CRI V2 or something to that effect. Yeah, but as Derek mentioned, it's, it sounds like a boiling revolution. So we need to specify how we can take a bucket of water out of this ocean, boil it, and then proceed to the next bucket. Right, yeah, yeah. And hopefully under the, under the uh, common process, we're removing the information, we're moving the information the container runtimes need to manage um, these containers for the pods uh, downstream. Yeah, this, yeah. this may also come up, uh, I don't know who attended the whole uh, sidecar discussion where there was a proposal to instead uh, have explicit dependencies like on the startup order and shutdown order like, like system B. So if we end up going down that route, then it will make more sense to give the entire pod spec to the runtime. And then runtime is responsible to manage the life cycle of the containers within the pod. But it's it's still early days in that discussion. But it, it looks like it's headed that direction. Yeah, that looks pretty interesting. I especially like when they they started talking about the you know a graph order, um, you know, with priorities for for the sequence. So one of the problems with uh, what thing uh, Derek mentioned in the CRI discussion is what. Like uh, it blows the responsibility of, for example, like priority of evacuation or killing of uh, offending workloads. So he doesn't want to remove it from a kublet. So we need to redefine what actually, what kublet will be responsible for and what runtime. So like yeah, sorry, co 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 kublet says what uh, and runtime says how. But Sasha, uh, so that, so this OM adjustment, yes, that's fine that the kubelet is deciding that, but the problem is that the kubelet is currently hiding from the runtime and everybody who is behind the CRI interface, that how much it has promised uh, the containers that it can use memory. So basically the memory yes, is but, And no, that is but, impossible but, but, to calculate reverse, so that we should get. Yeah, that is part of uh, what uh, what both Michael and uh, Auntie wrote and we kept proposal. Is, yeah, is about full so how to get full well full put spec or at least like full resource information what containers are requiring. Mm. But uh, what I meant by it like what to run, it's more about like the logical eviction uh, of the pod. So when when some condition on the node trigger it and Kublet needs to start evicting. It will evict first or start killing uh, containers for like normal workloads and system workloads will be like in, in the last priority. So that part stays in the kublet, but how it's run, how it's killed in the runtime, in my opinion. Mm. All right. So Recentering a bit on, I think, CDI and NRI. Um, concretely, um, if we wanted to try to integrate CDI with the NRI, that would probably look like an NRI plugin. And if there are things that'd be missing, it seems like we would probably need to make some pull requests to the NRI or some of the container D code. Is that something that makes sense? So let, let, let me say something about that. So Renaud, you're correct. What uh, where current CDI can be implemented in NRI approach. So like in, in case if we uh, hook into this pre-create state. So we can get the uh, container from uh, CRI, inject whatever we need, and then pass it to runtime to execute. Uh, well, it's doable, but when it covers only the case for uh, for Kubernetes and CRI, but our initial idea was what it's also applicable for Docker command line and for uh, for Podman command line. So how, 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 how do you see where? So, uh, so let me let me ask. Um, this is something that I might have not completely understood. The NRI is integrated in container D um, CRI shim, or is it integrated in container D directly? Uh, it's currently in the CRI right now, but like you would just hook into 
whatever client code is calling like CTR or whatever and continue. So, so one of the thing, at least, um, this is what Alex has mentioned. One of the thing we're really hoping is um, CI is something that um, eventually pops up to the Docker CI, um, maybe the container DCI. Um, at, at the end of the day, what we're really looking for is first and foremost, being able to do um, Docker or Podman um, run dash dash device, uh, my super device, and then something like Ubuntu, and then uh, my vendor tool, if that makes sense. Um, and then that's, that's what we're looking to do because at the end of the day, what we're hoping is at least the, the mental model that we have for something like Kubernetes is that instead of what Kubernetes is doing today, which is Docker slash Podman run dash V my volume um, or my binary dash dash device dash E, et cetera. Uh, we really want Kubernetes to be doing something like this. That's that's the mental model that we're going for rather than the current mental model, which is this. And so for us, the, the, the first objectives here is really to surface this through the CI. Um, and then with this, surface this back to Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. But like looking at it from the CNI standpoint, we still have to put the hooks in for for those various places because of the way you get information in. Like you have to have hooks in the CRI and like Docker Docker Demon part. You can't. I don't think there's a way to get the best of both worlds where you get all of the pod spec for cube specific runs and be able to do advanced like resource placement and topology with just a generic kind of the way Docker and stuff is today, container by container uh, running. Okay, so, so what you're saying is that I'm still, so, if I were to rephrase and what you're saying is that there's going to be need or we are going to need to have to change a bit the um, how the NRI is called in the container D um, project and in the container D shim project, uh, sorry, CRI shim. Or am I, or did I completely misunderstand what you said? Uh, so, so the CRI shim stays the same because we provide the additional pod information in the NRI invokes for adding this to Docker or another client. You'd have to add the NRI hooks to that specifically because there's not a generic way to shove this inside container D core and to know a pod run versus a specific oh. container invoke from Docker. I see, I see what you're saying. Okay, that starts to make sense. Um, what about one cry and pod one? How, I don't know, how do you feel about it? I think I'll probably need to uh, look at a deeper demo or something uh, to, to figure out how we can integrate it. But it looks like if at the CRI level, it should be fine. Uh, but I think that the thing then is like CRI works for cryo, but it doesn't work for podman. So we'll, we'll how to figure out how we'll uh, work in Podman. Yeah, it, it should be exactly the same as Docker versus CRI Kubernetes. You just have to add the hooks in because they're kind of two different payloads. Okay. Isn't, I think the Podman case is probably a little special, right? Where it's trying to run a, a container um, for a, for a pod, but it's more it's more just running one container, right? It's not integrated with Kubernetes or anything like that. No, it's not. It, yeah, it can it can run just like Docker, like a container at a time. So, yeah. 
So if we wanted to support that API at the CTR level, I think we could actually just call to um, the CRI code with a, you know, generate a pod, a generic pod spec in a similar way that the Podman team does. Well, I already had it program. integrated in, in CTR the first time you just add the one line in our iHooks. Cool. All right, gotcha. Just to make sure, um, are, I mean, do these notes make sense? Am I writing things that... <laughs> Uh, yeah, makes sense from the container D perspective and Docker. All right. Um, yeah, I guess Al Alexander, the the question would be to you, right, on your side, or you know, others like you, if you if you require additional pod spec details on the containers that are run at that layer. So can well, you operate just on a single pod? I'm sorry, a single, a single container as opposed to, you know, requiring the additional pod spec info. Well, right now we are able to throw out whatever the current CRI messages have. So some of the information we are just deducting from uh, uh, pieces of right. what is available. Uh, it's not ideal, but it, it, it's doable. And we want to get a full resource specification, so we will be like using the real data, not just uh, heuristics to, de to detect it back. Uh, however, for us, it doesn't really matter like what granularity. What what matter is what we are able to get uh, like needed messages, like all create, update, delete, uh, and if needed to modify them. Uh, sort of apply. Okay, and, so it's just a little that, that, thing. You, you, you've probably got some detail around when, when we're using shared namespaces like in a pod um, across multiple containers. But yeah, so that for level, us, yeah, for us, the pod is also needed uh, to, to get that information because we are supporting feature where container affinity and anti affinity. So, for example, like if you have like database and consumer within okay. one pod. And needs to be located close together. We need to have information what this container actually part of one pod. And right, we, we and we, and we, we actually have that at the at the container level. So he could pass yeah. it over the NRI in the cases where it's applicable. Right. Um, yeah. That, that yes. Yeah, CRI messages have all of that information. So what we expect from NRI is to have the same ability what we can uh, intercept on the CRI things. And, Nothing more. Okay. But of course, like longer term to, to also evolve with CRI to, to have uh, enough useful information inside it. That should be an interesting implementation, Michael. <laughs> well, you can already see the implementation. This is our project CRI RM is public, so you, you can look what we are doing. But in reality, it's it's quite a really simple code. Like take okay. uh, <laughs> gRPC server request, uh, analyze, modify, and pass it to a gRPC client. Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm just thinking yeah. like how how to make your your code work um, via a, a plugin. Our, our code will be quite simple to to do like well, the whole policy engine is uh, can be detached into separate library. The only thing we well, only will be different is what instead of this proxy object, we will be <laughs> getting the calls from some of our GRPC servers or whatever else we, we will come up with, but no, nothing much changes. Yeah, I think the only big difference in terms of API design is between CDI and NRI where we're wanting the entire topology for the resource use case while CDI focuses on single container devices. But I think both can coexist fairly simply. Well, Michael, generally uh, CDI in long term is su supposed to support also the pod level devices. 
uh, what applicable especially for like RDMA uh, kind of devices where like you have a shared memory between multiple containers within one port. Uh, so the current CDI it will just inject the same device twice into multiple containers. Oh, well, as many containers as many devices. So it, it hides that complexity. All right. Um, I do want to time box this a bit um, so that we have maybe 15 minutes to just um, prepare a bit um, some questions for the KubeCon panel. Um, was there anything else we wanted to talk about uh, for NRIC? I, whether were there any topics? Uh, well, Rano, if you can move this cap proposal to level up because it's related to all these discussions. Um, well, yeah, which one? Uh, one uh, the one which you had with anti the last proposal. One? Yeah. Um, so okay, it's, but it's I do want to time box it since we have to, uh, the KubeCon panel discussion is. No, um, no, I don't want to discuss it. I'm saying it's part of this NRI discussion. So well, the only thing what is required is just what people start looking and say, like, guys, you're doing stupid thing or yeah, we have some comments how to do it. Definitely. Um, do you want to talk about it uh, or do you want to also present it in the next um, um, in the next meeting so that we have some kind of formal review and people will actually yeah, like we can do it. Yeah. For, for, for that meeting so that um, after at the end of the next meeting, we actually say yes, no, that makes sense. That does not make sense. Okay. All right. Four more review next meeting. All right. Um, Michael, thanks for joining us today. I think like we definitely have. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll probably have at least um, we at least I have a better idea of what needs to be done, and um, I think where we're going with this. All right, sounds good. All right, and I think that's it. Um, KubeCon panel discussion. Um, so it, at least what some, I mean, some of the discussion we were having is that um, the format is more of a Q&A um, for since it's a panel and we, might present some slides, but it really should be reduced to maybe a small charter slide, a small roadmap slide. And um, if if there's a need for an architecture diagram, that might be a good place, but um, it should be at most three, four slides, uh, not that much. The, the real format is, at least from what we have seen from other panels um, online is, um, a moderator or a speaker or maybe speakers take turn to, um, and asking each other's questions and um, other speakers just answer them. So I don't know, um, my, my general idea here is just let's list some of the questions that we think actually make sense in a QA. and a um, Let's list some of the answers that we, we would like to see to the, these questions. Um, and that's it. Also keep in mind that we do have um, 45 minutes, but we should keep 10, 15 minutes at the end for um, online questions. Does that make sense? All right. Um, let me write down some of the questions that um, the people here want to see. Um, so before we go to the questions, so let's let's decide first. Uh, well, my moderator, like Ronald, are you? Are you willing to be a moderator or we need to have uh, like I'm happy to be a moderator. I'll also be presenting, by the way, I'll just, um, I'm also presenting the SIG run time with uh, Ricardo, um, which I'll be presenting CDI uh, there. Um, I'm happy to be a moderator, but if, if we think that it makes more sense to just like have a moderator or a design person for each question, that also makes sense. To me. I, I think we we need to have like at least minimal role of moderator just because like the first the first two three minutes of a, of a panel is what we we need to introduce the topics we need to introduce the people just like 
saying like now you introduce yourself now you introduce myself and, and, and so on and when probably like short uh, saying from each one like i am from xyz uh, like sure. and, and, and afterwards maybe f again like first first two questions like where charter and architecture is is first things which needs to be asked and afterwards we can uh, shuffle to to, to already to uh, like more discussion between all participants but at least like the first few minutes to set up the tone of the discussion we needed okay um who wants to be a monitor let's start with this one i think we have uh, uh Vashi, uh mike and alex Morales are, are already left who who wants to vote for a moderator <laughs> <laughs> i vote for you <laughs> all right let's go with that no the moderator all right. Uh, and let's go. Uh, is there anyone in the meeting that wishes to, or that thinks he or she has a list of questions? So I think for most of the, uh, well, at least one of the first questions I would ask everybody uh, in, in, in this forum is what, like we are representatives from the different companies and from different areas. So like right now you are device manufacturer, we are uh, hardware manufacturer together, like both device and uh, like resource management things. Uh, Mike and Manal is from Runtime's world. So uh, well, the first question would be, what is this CDI for you, for your area? What do you expect? and what problems you are trying to solve with it. What's, what's the title of the panel? Introduction of Working Group. Is that, is it, oh, do you mean that should be a question? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I mean, we, we, what do you expect from CDI and the, but it's the COD working group. So <clears throat> at some, at some level, we need to talk about the, you know, what, what are, what are the various projects that are, that are involved that, you know, the COD working group is trying to encompass, right? And what is this, right? Yeah, well, that's, that should be part of the first introduction. Yeah, I just say right right away on the first one, we we dove into CDI, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would, right. <clears throat> so you almost need a, yeah, I think, were you talking about, Ronald, were you talking about doing an intro, maybe a five minute with a couple of charts? Um, that's definitely a possibility. I can, I, I, like, as a moderator, I can, spin up like one or two slides i mean we already yeah. have already at least have one it. right <laughs> at least one so that the audience can ask questions from the picture right yeah um i i think i shared that let me give me a quick second um i've got the slides actually in my uh Actually, uh, I don't know what I'm thinking. Uh, if if you if it will be easier for you, we can like share the role of moderator, especially for this introduction sides. So, for that example, like, I, 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 yeah. I can I can ask you uh, questions like, okay, well, we form a web group. Can you, uh, you know, talk more about like what it is about and why? And when you show a couple of slides and then turn back and. All right. Something like that. Here's the slide deck that I have, because I I had um I created a few slides um as part of um Sigrun Times TOB chart or presentation, um like um then there's a technical management meeting for. Here you go, Sigrun. slide four. What is the group? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, uh, and. And then you got a roadmap on the next one. Yeah, those are good. Those are two good charts. Yep. 
One of the key questions we need to ask in the beginning, so why it was formed on the SIG uh, time and on the CNCF, not on the Kubernetes. So that will open the area to, to explain what we are trying to cover, not only Kubernetes, but also our uh, usages inside. And by, and by SIG runtime, it's CNCF SIG runtime. And, and on the not Kubernetes, it's probably in not uh, Kubernetes SIG node. Well, I, I wouldn't outline specifically signal. <laughs> well, who else? <laughs> they, they own Kublet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I know. You know all the stuff Why not SIG the whole run, all the runtimes. Um, Why not SIG instrumentation? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, not 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 just to pinpoint any of the existing SIG groups in, in the Kubernetes. Just saying, like our use case is more wide than Kubernetes. Like regardless yeah, whatever just, whatever area inside Kubernetes it touches. I, I do think it's lit, it's useful to list the the SIGs that are related. Say so SIG instrumentation is important here. I'd list them. That's all. Well, the instrumentation at some point SIG scheduling will be involved. Uh, no, I don't know. Security might be. I mean, that could be a question if you'd like. What are the what are the Kubernetes related Kubernetes SIGs? But yeah, we yeah. can. What 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 might be more appropriate? All right. Uh, how about um, the silent voices in the room? Uh, what do they think? The what voices? The silent voices. Oh, the silent. <laughs> For example, <laughs> you, you're you Vashi. Is, uh, am I pronounced that right? Vashi. Yeah. Hello. Hey, what, what do you think? What, what, what questions should we be asking each other? Or should I be asking you? <laughs> um, I agree with the question so far. I'm also thinking of what. Do we want to talk about NRI at all, or are we just going to do a CDI for the panel? That's that's really a great question. I think. Uh, we, we just talked about it for an hour and we completely <laughs> forgot about it. I think well, it's we, 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 we can mention what we have for our discussions ongoing uh, related to the devices because like devices not uh, existing in the vacuum. We have a bunch of our resource needs or, well, resources on the devices which needs to be also handled somehow. So we, we we might mention, but we are also looking at the scope, which potentially can improve the CRIs and improve the plugin mechanism and the runtimes. Mm -hmm. And here I would say NRI hooks and CDI intercept, right? Or runtime hooks, I guess. No, NRI comma. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, runtime hooks, right? Yeah, runtime hooks. Um, we might actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because um, I, I, I did a presentation um, a month ago in um, this work group that's called the uh, HPC Advisory Council, uh, and I talked to a few runtime maintainers, um, Singularity, Saris, um, these, um, um, I want to say, smaller, uh, with big quotes, um, probably specialized runtimes for HPC. Um, so maybe there's a question here around the fact that what about other runtimes? Um, so I, 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 I definitely think that to me, um, specialized runtime is, 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 I think it's, it's important that we talked about and talk about the fact that we're not really just focused on these two Kubernetes, um, runtimes, but also um, the, the, the more specialized runtimes and that there is conversation with them. So like you're talking about, um, Kata containers. I mean, Kata containers is definitely another, um, runtime we'll, we'll have to talk to. Crackers, that, that kind of stuff. Yep. Yeah. By the way, sp speaking of VM based runtime, so we, sooner or later we will need to figure out, uh, how to be injecting with devices where, because if we are injecting only on the container start time, it might be already too late because VM was already created and you can't hot block with device. 
So it's again back to, to the discussion of uh, just getting, getting a full pod spec and getting the full information about the container. And I, and I believe the sooner or later should probably be in the next. <laughs> okay. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of that NRI code's going to have to live in the shims, Alex. Um, Eventually, right. we'll, we'll we'll get to that detail later. But so if um, if this is forty five minutes, then we have let's say fifteen minutes for external questions. That leaves us with thirty minutes, uh, which is maybe six. What, what are we trying to get out of the the panel? Right? Are we trying to get oh. involvement from the from the you know? from the audience? So and I would say at least two things as you're, as you're saying. Um, we want to have more involvement from, from, from run times. And so that's probably what about other run specialized run times is, is one of these questions. The other one that I think is important is that we want to share some of the thoughts with some of these other SIGs. So other people from Kubernetes um, just um, not just share the ask idea. That question then, and then the answers could be the, you know, the SIGs, like you said, the SIGs and the specialized runtimes. And so I think, and, and to me, we need to make sure that there's a bit of nuance in our um, thoughts and answers, in that we probably need to be on the side of here are some of the IDs that we have. They might not fit always with the SIGs, or maybe we haven't talked with all the runtimes, and it's possible that. Um, I mean, you 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 see where I'm going, is that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We, uh, that we're right. prescribing an ID, and that we're just here's the result of our work, and it's possible that uh, not everything is done, not everything will interact nicely. So, Renal, is it is it fair to say when you set the tone, you're going to say why this is important? That I think is important, yes. Um, so if you're going to answer the why this is important question, right, then, then we, we just have to decide when, when we're going to ask for help to the audience, right? <laughs> yeah, I kind and of then we go to question. Hopefully then we go to questions, right? By the way, regarding the questions, uh, I would suggest to add one question is, what is your specific uh, use case for the devices? What you are trying to solve. Uh, you mean from the cut from the people in the audience, or from from from, from, from the people on the panel? On the panel, that'll be you. Yeah, you and uh, Renal, I think. Um, yeah. So maybe then taking a step back, I in these first three slides that I'll be presenting, um, I can talk about why this is important. But it's it's, I think it makes sense that the first question is then what are the use case or what are the actual real world problem you're trying to solve, right? And this is what I think Alex was saying. That's a that part that's, of the why it's important. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's not just something that I say immediately as part of the presentation. It's also something that both um, Alex yeah, and I are talking about, right? Yeah. So that maybe, maybe this should not, should not be CI specific, right? It's what you expect from, and then maybe one of the answer could be from CDI and then from the COD work group, right? Yep. By the way, or uh, I, I don't know exactly what you are working on. Are you part of runtime or devices yeah. as well? No, I'm part of runtime. I work with Murnal and Cryo. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> all right. So we have three people with the uh, with runtimes and two people from devices. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was also thinking maybe one question can be what our roadmap looks like, like what we hope to accomplish in like the near future, like what the plan is, basically like an overview. Yeah, he's got that 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 slide five, I think it was, or was it okay. six? It had yeah, to... but it's only a slide for the CDI. Oh, um, yeah, it needs to be. And, and, and what's fun? What's fun for them all? Yeah, but th that's that's an actual very important point um, because that was actually also one of the questions we were asking ourselves in not the previous meeting, but the meeting a month ago, which is 
there's a lot of initiatives here. We're trying to close on CDI, but at the same time, there's a lot of ideas that we want to be talking about. So um, maybe that's something that we can probably, uh, or we need a slide out of. Um, and maybe that's something you want, you can present, uh, Alex, because you, you have all these problems. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll try to add to a slide. Uh... Th thank you very much, by the way. I think that was like, that was, that's, that's really an important point is roadmap is real use case and roadmaps are going to be the big, um, or at least the big two things that we should be spending time on. Yep. We're at the, and we're at the beginning of the road. So <laughs> this is the time to jump on guys. We need help. Yep. Um, what are the areas this group is involved is, is I think also important. Um, Okay, so maybe last one. Um, are we just getting more involvement in sharing the IDs or are there things that we want to be getting out of this panel more? So we have set of ideas. We have uh, some draft of implementations. We have background use cases why it's needed. What we don't have is uh, we don't have any representatives from like our runtime. So we, we cover in only like the major ones with Cry and Campania. We need people from HPC world. We need people from our like small runtimes. We need VM based runtimes to, to provide information what kind of challenges these devices we have. Uh, There's also non Kubernetes users of CRI. <laughs> We, we, we have non-Kubernetes users. We have people with uh, very strange devices, which potentially like wrote a plugin and somehow satisfied, but maybe also not 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 really satisfied, but silent. Uh, we need those people to speak up. Uh, we need to have information about more complex configurations. We need to have information about more complex devices if we have. When you say yeah, strange devices, you're covering resources too, right? Not just devices. Yeah, for example, like well, on, on our GPUs or FPG, we have local RAM, so we need to cover it. But I don't know, like some, I don't know, like weird Mellanox uh, network card might have like internal buffers, what you can imagine. Uh, Somehow oh, manage or something like that. I think it's really important that we present the mental model um, at some point, if that makes sense. Of CDI mental model. I, to, this is what I was saying to um, Michael. This idea of Docker run dash dash device rather than Docker run dash v. I think I to me that's it's really important that we talk about this because it it. it it makes sense in everyone's head. This this idea of saying Docker run dash dash device versus Docker run dash v is is something that really should be hitting people. And hey, that seems like a really important idea, actually. When we let's move it to with one like one of the first set of questions when we were talking about architecture. Yeah. And in the introduction part, I, if you want, I can ask you what question and you answer it. Yeah, introduction to CDI in a way. It's, it's something that needs to happen here uh, yeah. because we're, we're really talking about use case roadmap, but at some point we really need some kind of introduction to CDI. And then maybe that's when we start explaining why we're SIG runtime and not a Kubernetes SIG. What are some of the related SIGs? Um, how does NRI and CDI intersect? Things like that. Right. All right. Um, that, that's that's at least some pretty good amount of work. Um, we should definitely try to think. Um, at least try to maybe um, like expand on these offline, and then uh, from there we probably need to. Um, fix the um, recording session, and then um, hopefully we'll only need one take. <laughs> but we all know we'll probably need at least two or three. <laughs> on, your, on your mental model, Renaud, um, when yep. you talk about Docker, are you going to follow that up with 
you know, or if you're using kubectl. <laughs> yep. there, there needs to be a transition. This is the Kubernetes SIG. I mean, a, you know, a Kubernetes group, right? It's CNCF, yep. but it's also, you know, it's mostly KubeCon, right? Yep. Well, that makes sense. It's mostly, it's mostly KubeCon, but on the other hand, it's also SIG runtime. So we, we no, I, I think it's a fair question, which is how does it look like from a Kubernetes end user is a fair question. Um, yeah, just we, a, a, you mean, if it's only one sentence, that should be fun, right? Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> right, but still, you know, because most of the audience isn't going to know what Kubelet is, right? Um, but they, they should all know, you know, what Kube control is or kubectl, right, kubeco. Yeah, but when, another question is, uh, well, well, kubectl is fine, but uh, you need to have device plugin, which actually will be exposing or backing up that device. So we, like, even we, if we, let's run, today we implemented CDI, we are great. We don't have a part in the kubelet which will pass that information down. I, I think it's okay to present a bit. How does it look like from an end user perspective? Right, um, right, yeah. If it's if it's if it's a single sentence, um, it's 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 not that bad. Uh, it's, it's it makes a lot of sense to just try to um, relate it to the audience. Relate it to the audience in a way. Um, all right. Um, so let me see. I'll I'll try to set up the doodle. Um, ASAP, and then feel free to all come back to this document, um, rewrite some of the questions. Um, we'll probably have to assign some of these questions. Um, if we only have six questions to ask and we have five speakers, that's going to be a fun. Uh, for <laughs> oh, who are the five speakers? I, I thought, <laughs> I didn't remember. Was uh, you are one of them. <laughs> you're one of them. Uh, I'm <laughs> I was just curious. Are we are are we four or five? I forgot. Uh, so Mike, Renal, Alex, Yuvashi, and myself. That's five. Ah, there you go. Um, Hello, Yuvashi. Mike Brown. <laughs> I don't I don't know Yuvashi. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you. We should have done that at least three meetings ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's it's probably like, I was phased out, you know. I'm taking all the blame for 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 not ha for 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 not having, or at least for not presenting each other. <laughs> How long is the slot for? I, I just joined back, so. Uh, um, thirty uh, to forty-five minutes, I believe. I uh, might be wrong. Let me check. So we want fifth, the back fifteen for cust you know, you audience questions. Okay, so we need to fill fifteen minutes minimum, I guess. Well, I would say 20, I, 25. We'll be doing okay. 15 minutes minimum. Um, yeah, so. you missed it, Renal. Basically, Renal is going to give a couple of charts at the beginning to set the stage, and then we'll just run through this list of questions and, and then try to get some audience feedback. Yeah, sounds good. This schedule, and then let me find it in the schedule just to make sure. Uh, COD is the keyword I'm looking for. So it is the panel is at three. So we only have 35 minutes for the panel actually, uh, which means that we really have 15 minutes to talk or to ask each other's uh, each other questions. So uh, Alex, on your question on the, what about other specialized runtimes? Are you talking about runtime engines or are you talking about container runtimes? <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh, we need a vocabulary slide. This is going to be fun. This is going to be tricky. <laughs> uh, so, actually, since we're all here, let's 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 very quickly. Um, so, this is what this is the what question. Um, who asked this or who answers this what question? All right, not everyone at the same time, please. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> um, Alex, do you want to start with this one? Or okay. I'll ask you this one, and then you'll, you'll talk about your use case, and um, please present my use case. <laughs> uh, 
No, I think I think Alex is probably a good pan person for this one. Um, roadmap. Yeah. Uh, Mike, do you want to present the roadmap? I I think that should be done by you and all as a follow up on the uh, on the setting the tone. That makes sense. And I have no idea how I'm writing my name. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and you so might want to. I would do the roadmap a little bit further down. It's probably just before we go to audience questions. Yeah, that should uh, be the last one. Yeah, yeah, probably at the bottom. Otherwise, they don't know the vocabulary yet, right? So, yeah. So, yeah, so the first question is, is what? Like, what we are doing, why, uh, why it's important. Second question is what is, like, how much it's different uh, from existing solutions. So that's practically this... Uh, Mental setup, what uh, Ronald mentioned. Yeah, right. Why? Yes. So. So I can I can ask what, and Renault, you will be answering that. No, no, no. I'm not answering that one. Uh, I'm already okay. moderator, and I'm presenting the roadmap. Uh, that <laughs> um, so introduction to CDI should either be Renault or Mike or your Vashi. All right, uh, I, I volunteer your Vashi. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. <laughs> uh, all right, um, now we need questions to be answered from um, my so na 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 next, next, next thing is uh, like what is actually covered by it? So the CNRI, CDI things so all together. So, so why CNCF? And no, no, it's a bit later. So first we, we like what is what is in the scope? So scope. Yeah. All right. So who wants to volunteer someone? All right, you're actually, you get to choose if it's Mike or Mrunel. <laughs> uh, sure, I guess I'll go with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I, right. I, I think I help. I think, I think it would be, it would behoove us to probably have more than one person answer these questions. Mm -hmm. as long as we can, we can, we can talk about them together. So yes. I would say Mike and Mrunel should answer this question. Yeah, I think sounds good. I can cover the runtime hooks, how they work, and kind of exactly. uh, CDI, exactly. and Mike can cover NRI. Yeah. yeah. Right. So the next question would be okay. So we 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 are to, we talk to a scope when how it's all connected to the whole ecosystem, and goes with question about CNCF and SIG, uh, Kubernetes six and so on. So where we involve it and how it's connected to our orgs or groups in in my community. All right, and I think this one is also going to be Mike and Renault. So remember, we only get 15 to 20 minutes and then 10 to 15 minutes for questions. So we, the roadmap seems to be, to me, like it makes sense to be the last question. Yeah, I think when, when we first talk, we should probably say then, you know, where we're involved. And uh, yeah, so we can just move that where are we involved thing to the scope. Question? Makes sense. All right. Uh, no, 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 no. It's in the scope part. Yeah, so what is, what is the scope all. Is it all connected? <laughs> so I think to me these, yeah, they are kind of the same question. And we can, we can make it one question, yeah. Yeah, all right. And, uh, and you guys can do the same thing when you, when you guys are talking about your, yeah, you know, when you're showing the initial charts, you can say, you know, what is, what is the scope for you, right, and how are, how are you involved, right? And then uh, Alice can talk about that as well. You know, he can introduce himself and then, or did you want to introduce people? No, 
we we'll just jump straight into it. No mention of who we are. <laughs> well, I, I would say like the first introduction, not more than two, two, three sentences. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, by the way, do you want to each other introduce yourself or do you want me to introduce you? No, uh, I think each, uh, each of us will, will be better. All right. Because at, at, at least it will say it was just set the stage of speaking for the person. Short, short and sweet, Alexander. We know you got a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm, I'm just pulling you up. All right. Um, yeah, I, ha I have a problem with in Russian language. We have a long and uh, loaded sentences. So for when I'm speaking in, in English, I'm trying to repeat the same thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you do, you do great. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just pulling your leg. What are the answers to these questions? Um, I think everyone should try to write two or three bullet points. Feel free to ask these questions in the Slack chat or in the Slack direct messages if you kind of wonder if there are points that we're missing or maybe so think. Maybe we should translate these into slides and start filling out the talking points over there. Have like bullets over there. And then if we want more details, we put speaker yeah. notes or whatever there for having each other review those notes. Speaker so, notes. Definitely. So, um, Quick follow up on this. Um, these slides are talking point for us. We shouldn't be showing these slides, if that right. makes sense. Uh, sure, yeah. But uh, we can still do, do, do want to show it. We can still use this for like one or two charts that he was going to throw up so the audience knew, you know, what they were talking about. You know, yep. some kind of, just a high level pick. Okay. And then, a, okay. and then a roadmap picture, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll set up the doodle uh, or finalize the doodle, bug the people who did not answer. Uh, I think it's you, Alex. Uh, shame on you. <laughs> and yeah, I think um, I'll repost the link to this slide in our direct message. And that's it. Thank you, everyone, for your time. On that, that last one, you're going to show that, that what are we getting out of this? Or you're going to show some kind of chart with those bullets, maybe just before the question, the QA? Yes, that, that might be a conclusion slide where it's just conclusion. conclusion. We want you to be involved. Uh, yep. Ask not what the uh, COD working group can do for you, but ask what you can do. <laughs> you can do. Right. <laughs> do well, do for the... Uh, we need no, you. <laughs> you, need you for the <laughs> Let's listen. It's not for us. It's for CNCF, right? For, for yes. Kubernetes. Right? All right. And uh, yeah, definitely. This is a slide. Yeah. Yeah, we won't have any trouble the time, I think. Sorry, I didn't hear you. I was just saying, we won't have any trouble filling the time, I think. And I didn't hear your Reshi, sorry. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, I was just letting my finish. Um, I, I, my question was, is one person going to be asking all the questions or should we field the question after we answer our question? Yep, I'm, uh, I'm, I'll, be, I'll be asking you the question. Okay. So you'll have a card. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, oh, I'll be looking directly into the camera. <laughs> oh, man. I, I keep forgetting we're not, we're not actually going to be, like, sitting on chairs in front of the – oh, man, that's weird. By the way, uh, if, if you're using the Zoom to, to record and if you feel what you, you want to add something to the answer of our, we can uh, use this uh, rice hand uh, thing. So at least uh, the moderator can give a chance to answer also. Definitely. Um, I, actually, I, I, I don't know. Like this rice hand, is it going to be visible and recorded or not? But no, unless we're, unless, I don't think so. Um, but I, okay. I, I, I do think that for the Q&A section where it's not recorded, so we, it's, and it's not on Zoom, so um, that's Q&A section, recorded. I think it's recorded, but it's recorded by the platform. The Q&A with people? I think so. Well, it might be published it somewhere differently, but I think it wasn't available in the platform. So yeah. while, 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 while the platform is uh, still able to log in, uh, you see it. Okay. Um, I'll, let me, let's ask Nancy. 
um, and, and then figure out, uh, I mean, we, we, we need to ask her to figure out what are the technical details to, to, to do that. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, all right. We all share the same background, so it looks like we're sitting in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me see if I can. Uh, where is that? <laughs> I, I actually created my own custom image from the last, <laughs> from theirs. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, I ask it our support team. Say, so like, give me something, like, provide that wet one. It's oh no, time. NVIDIA is going to make me have the NVIDIA logo behind me. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually not bad. <laughs> oh, my device does not support virtual background, so that's not oh. clear. <laughs> oh, I see uh, container D up there. Yeah, this is probably not right there. <laughs> <laughs> we need, All right. We need, there's got to be a cryo logo in here somewhere. All right. You're, you're hiding it. It's behind your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. There oh. We go. The, no, that's the Kubernetes one. All right. Thank you, everyone. Frosty Kubernetes logo in it, something like that. All right. Have a great one. See you guys. Thanks. Bye. We'll, we'll okay.